Legion Gamers, Matt Lepke here with Scott Morris at the Arcane Wonders booth in uh, Origins, or in Columbus at Origins Game Fair. Yeah, I'm dyslexic. I reverse all my words and everything, so. Well, last year at Gen Con, we were at Origins 2015. So. That's right. Yeah, we now, were. now we're at remembers. Origins 2015. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually here now. <laughs> Time travel. <laughs> Doctor Who. We're, we're Whovians. All right, that's right. Um, but we're going to chat about dueling gra or battlegrounds. Uh, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn Onitaba. 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 Oh, that's uh, Oni, yeah. Onitaba. Yep, yep. We got we got a lot going on, right? And so. then we're gonna cover uh, City of Gears a little bit mm -hmm. and talk about the shutdown. Yeah. So yeah. let's start with Battlegrounds. Yeah. So Battlegrounds has been ridiculously popular. I'm really happy to see the reception of everyone to this game. So this is a new expansion type for Mage Wars. It introduces these puzzle cut tiles, so you can make whatever design you want to make for an arena for Mage Wars. And then uh, you'll notice that some of them have these like little icons in the corner. They have advanced rules for the tiles that could have in-game impacts. And it also is going to be a new way for us to, in the past, we've been introducing new mages with expansions, and with this style of expansion, we're going to introduce new rules. So this one was going to come with the domination scenario, where if you're familiar with video game domination, where you take control of a point and you get points over time, same thing is going to happen in this. There's going to be orbs inside the arena with guardians that you have to defeat to then gain control of the orbs, and the orbs will give you powers and they'll give you points. So I could potentially beat you just on winning on points and not having to destroy your life. And that makes it really interesting because you have those two options now. If somebody starts going after points and they get ahead on you, maybe you need 10 points to win, and they're at like seven or eight, and you've been trying to kill them, and suddenly they're only like one or two points away from winning, it totally changes your strategy, right? So new ways to play, new concepts, new ideas to put together for Spellbook. So we're really, really excited about this. In fact, yesterday, we, we sold out with like half our stock in one day. The, the number one thing I kept hearing from people was, I'm a video game player and I love domination. And I've never played Mage Wars before, but I'm jumping in just because of this type of mode in the game. Very really, nice. really cool. Really neat. So, been very successful. We're really, really happy. We're probably going to do about one of these a year. Um, next one we're looking at is a potential dungeon crawl, where you actually have the ability to lay out an arena that becomes a dungeon, and you have objectives, and you walk through, and you know, a little cooperative, a little competitive, and things like that. So, oh, that'd lots be of fun great. stuff. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. Really, yeah. Okay, so, Icon, Cloud, what's the Cloud name? Um, yes, I don't actually remember all the advanced rules for him, but I'm pretty sure, Aaron, the Cloud is gas, right? That's an obscuring mist. Obscuring mist. Obscuring mist. The green, one, the green one's that. And, and, and I'm guessing the, that's a spike pit trap. The bungee pit is <laughs> yeah, trap. That's a spike pit trap. Yeah, that was really cool. So. And, and you can tell it's a pit trap because it it's right, right the there. Yeah. yeah. So there's actually there's 20 different tiles in the game, which is amazing. So you got a lot of freedom. You could put all of them board. together and make a giant board for like multiplayer, or you could do like smaller ones. Like one of the things my son and I like to do is just do a very small four zone map. And we cut our spell book points in half, so we can literally play in like 30, 40 minutes. It's just great. It's really, really fun. That is, that's actually awesome. I love the fact that there's finally a good multiplayer board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, for well, for small cons where you haven't had a lot of exposure yet, and for somebody like me who goes to cons and runs events, that's ideal. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So now, aside from that, so Mate Wars has obviously been very successful since its inception, and now, now it's you know, growing. We got a lot happening from the Dice Tower. So everyone right. knows this guy, or most people know this guy. Nominee! Yeah, that's right. Origins nominee. We're very happy about that. And uh, it's, it's been nominated for multiple things, and we've done really well with the game. Sharp playing it's been very popular worldwide. Um, but that was just the first in the Dice Tower line. And when we brought that out, we said we're going to have a line. So the question becomes, what's next? Technically, this isn't next, but it is in the works. The next okay. game is going to be City of Gears, which is designed oh, wow. by Chris Leader. We don't have a prototype of that here. It's actually like delivering it on its way here. We are going to be demoing it over the weekend, though, here. Um, City of Gears is an amazing game. So it is a Euro worker placement and exploration game, but you can do it in four players in 45 minutes. And that's amazing, because most games like that are like two or three hour experiences. And I don't know about you, but I love that idea. I just hate losing it. I want to be able to play and enjoy, and if I lose, let's play again, right? Yes, so yeah, okay. That, that's what we're shooting for. Um, it's a beautiful game. It's set in this fantasy steampunk world. 
where the city was being built as a beacon of hope to the races of the world, and the architect passed away unexpectedly, and we're now entrepreneurs who have to use our automaton workers to go out into the city, discover its abilities, use its abilities, gain resources, gain the most prestige, and open the city to the public. So we're really excited about bringing that game out. It's been under development now for about a year. Um, lots of little tweaks and movements and things like that, which is ironic considering it's a gear game. Um, but it's been really exciting. Chris has been a great designer to work with. Uh, most people know him from Roll for it for Calliope Games. Uh, oh, okay. And then he also did Train Maker from Grey Gnome Games, which was a recent success of Kickstarter. So we're really happy about that one. That's going to come out later this year. And then this is going to come out later this year as well. This is called Oni Tom. Now, um, if you're familiar with Sheriff, Sheriff's a bluffing game. Uh, we just talked about City of Gears. It's more of a Euro work replacement game. This is completely different from both of those. So this is everything in the game right here. You've got a very small board of a 5x5 grid. You've got five pieces on each side, and you have these cards. The cards tell you how you can move your pieces. The object is you have a main king pawn, or as the game is called right now, it's an Omnio monk. You want to get your piece to the other side of the board in the opponent's starting position, or you want to capture your opponent's Omnio monk. Now, that sounds simple, and it sounds maybe too simple, but what happens is everyone gets two cards, so it's a two-player game. You would have two cards, I would have two cards, and there's a fifth card that's laid out off to the side. So of the 16 cards, you're only going to use five of them in the game. What happens is once you decide to make a move, you use your card, and then you exchange it with the one that's in the middle. So what I now know is there's a finite number of moves. There's only these five moves in the game. And I now know that my opponent is going to have access to the move that I just did in turn. So what happens is it starts to actually like subliminally train your brain to think like a chess player. You're thinking two, three, four, possibly five moves in advance. And the amazing thing about this is it's done in five to ten minutes. You can literally play a game in as quick as five to ten minutes. So very small, very portable, very fun, and high amount of replayability. I had a customer come by yesterday and he said one of the coolest comments. He said, this game is one of the first games I've seen that offers actual replayability and not just modularity. And he said, oh, his, wow. his, yeah, his, his comment was That's that cool. you don't necessarily, in some games you feel like there's a lot of replayability, but you're really just modularizing the game, checking yes. one thing one thing out. And this really has a lot of replayability. So this is a really, we're really excited about this. We partnered with a company called Conception from Japan. They've been tremendous to work with. Uh, Shinpei Sato is the designer. Just tremendously fun, small, light, but yet very strategic games. So we're really happy. And then on top of all of that, there's a fourth Nice Tower Essential that's going to come out this year as well, called Royals, which is from Peter Hawes. Uh, Peter's the designer of Francis Drake and Triassic Terror. Great guy, tremendous designer. And Royals, if you like Ticket to Ride, will love Royals. It's that style of casual, set collecting, very, very fun game. In our game though, what you do is you set collect to influence different areas of Europe, and then as you influence different areas of Europe, you then influence royal members of the family, and then you gain prestige with them to be able to win the game at the end. So, very, very, very fun game. We've been looking forward to that one for a while. We just signed that in partnership with him on that Fischbiel in Germany, and we're going to bring that out there this year as well. So, that covers this year. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally. Well, no, we didn't even talk about some of the other stuff. I mean, we, we have Paladin vs. Siren coming out later this year. For I'm uh, looking forward to Paladin vs. Yeah, Siren. We're really looking forward to that one. Our fans have been waiting for that one for a while, and they deserve it. And we, we just really look forward to getting that one out. So. Yeah, but I think this first was a good choice. Thank you. That was the plan. So, yeah, that was, that was the plan. So, it's, it's going pretty good. So, yeah, we've got a lot in the hopper. We do have things lined up for next year. We're just not talking about them yet. We're, we haven't really announced anything yet. But we do have a couple of games signed for next year. Um, and just a lot. I mean, we're just growth momentum up and to the right. We're really happy with that. And, you know, so far so good. Mage Wars is its own standalone line. We have Academy coming out later this year, which is going to add to this universe and add players to the universe. The Dice Center Central line is growing, and as you can see, each game is going to be very different, unique, but they're all bound together by that one thing that Tom loves these games, right? So right. It's, it's really nice to see both lines of games surviving and thriving on their own doing very well and speaking to certain types of audiences and speaking to other types of audiences. So we're really happy with that. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good dichotomy to have, two sides of the coin. You know? That's right, two sides oh, of the coin. That's perfect. That's perfect. It, it is. Um, and so far, I think I like everything that you guys have done. Thank you. Thank I, I'm you. really looking forward to Onitara. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, I, I can't say enough about what I think about this game. <laughs> That's great. I, I watched it played, and I'm like, wow. It's like, you know, you could be any type of gamer. It's small enough. You can yeah. put it in a bag. Yeah. You can play this between rounds in a Magic tournament or a Yu-Gi-Oh yep. event and still stimulate your mind and be refreshed and ready for your next round. And even young players can play. Well, we had uh, a, families playing yesterday with this young six and seven year old yeah. kids. It's I great. think it's, a, not only that, I think it's a great gateway game. Yes, yes. Yeah, really, really, I mean, really and at the same time, it has a lot of appeal for an advanced gamer. Yes. Um, that yeah. likes strategy. If you don't like strategy, uh, maybe not. Okay, that's right. <laughs> maybe not, you right. know, because there's a lot of thinking, but that's all good. We got other options, right? <laughs> so. Uh, any big events planned for the show this year? Anything, um, anything? No, our big thing, I mean, we, we kind of consolidated everything into one big booth space here where we are right now. We've got open gaming going on. We got we do have an event where people can come and play Aaron, the Lord of the Designers for Battlegrounds, and if they beat him, they actually get a copy, so we can have a lot of fun with that. Um, See, that's big. <laughs> it is, it is. So uh, the, the next big event for us is going to be at Gen Con, which is going to be our Mage Wars tournament there. Um, and that, I think that's already sold out. If it's not, it's really close to being sold out. Um, and then we're also going to have Play to the Designer events at Gen Con. We're going to have Play to Win Share events at Gen Con. So uh, lots of things happening at Gen Con. What's the price for the Mage Wars event? Or, or is that uh, it's, a, it's a multiple thing. Like we're, we're, we get like priced top out top four. Uh, top person usually walks away with several hundred dollars and stuff. So yeah, it's so pretty cool. It's so, so good. Yeah. And trophies, right? Yeah, yeah. We have like we do like prints, like custom poster prints and like, things like that. So yeah, it's really. It's really fun. We, we try to we try to make it unique, but you know, still enjoyable and fun for everybody. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you. Awesome. Anytime. I Thank hope you, you uh, appreciate it. have a great show. What's left of so it? So far, it's been great. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, been fun it's, going. it's been a good show so far. Cool. So, awesome. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you well, hopefully before Gen Con.